Yestin is one of the great talents of singing at, at this moment. Um, he was remarkable when he was in our choir and his, his rise has been steady and, as we always thought, pretty meteoric. You can't get higher than the Met and Covent Garden. important things when you're recording is to is to come to it with knowledge that you've, you've actually embedded a role in your in your voice and in your mind on stage and so um, whether it be a concert stage or in some productions such as Jephthah which I've done at Welsh National Opera which we're singing an aria from in this um, stuff that you've actually embodied a role on stage in costume and so that was very important for me to get as many of those arias in. put together between between the two of us uh, a, a disc which has I hope enough of the the favorites that people will really expect somebody like Yestin to be recording but at the same time to bring in some some surprises <laughs> The King's Consort were actually one of the first groups I worked with when I came to London, when I came down from Cambridge and I went to the Royal Academy of Music and um, I started off in the choir and I've always felt that it was a, it was a, a really good community feeling within that, within the, the choir and the orchestra. This project in a way sort of is a it's sort of crowning moment for that. Carolyn's a wonderful, natural singer. She's got one of those voices which, when you first hear it on disc, um, it's, it's just liquid gold, it's incredible. It suits this music down to the ground. And um, it's one that you could just listen to for hours, so it's a complete and utter pleasure to be able to duet with her. He's a great musician, he is blessed with a lovely voice and he has the intelligence to put the two together and use it and that's something that doesn't always happen. It's wonderful to work so frequently with the same musicians, they can interpret as, as the great players can, you know, the body language, the, the little hand gestures, the eye, the look that comes, because we really do know each other. The people are, um, first of all, um, individually of incredibly high calibre. Um, so Robert um, managed to get just a very fine group of musicians together. People here um, play for the King's Concert quite regularly, so we all know each other and we all know how to just create the sound immediately. You know, you go off and do concerts and you do operas and you do um, uh, recitals and then there's this bit of recording and it just sheds another light on how people listen to you and how you perceive yourself and it's, it's rare that you actually listen to yourself and it's quite an, a revealing experience at times. <laughs>
Handel took London by storm when he appeared, and the fact he maintained this position for more than 30 years, 40 years in London, does suggest that he really managed not just to, to, to find the top position, but to maintain it, to develop it, and to draw people in. In late oratorios like Jephthah and Theodora, they are today some of the hardest hitting dramatic pieces that, of Handel's that we put on stage, and they've, they've had great realizations dramatically. He had something in his humanity, the humanity of his music, the humanity of the, the dramas that he was creating that really did appeal to that 18th century audience, but still appeals to a 21st century audience. And that is a truly remarkable dramatist at work that across 300 years, he can still be drawing people in.